Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I am your host, Liam, aka Himvar, and today I have another poem for you. Now I decided to do something a little different. I've had this one stuck in my head for a little bit. I've had the thought of doing it a while ago, around the same time I did Cadman's Hymn, but this is a writing... I don't know if it has a known author, I just know it's called The Creation of Adam. I also don't know if you would technically call it a poem, but it definitely has a rhythm to it, and in my mind that makes it a poem. So, um, it is actually, I have, I have two things here on my desk. I have my old Frisian textbook, which I did take an old Frisian class for half a credit once, and there was two people in the class and I was one of them. This is by... Rolf Bremer, of course. This is like the only free old Frisian textbook you're basically going to be able to get unless you want one that's super old. Of course, old Frisian is a language very similar to old English or Anglo-Saxon. They are the closest languages. I mean, as far as Anglo-Saxon goes, the closest language to it would be old Frisian. Old uh, Frisia or Friesland is in present day Netherlands mostly, there's parts of it in Germany as well. There are a few Frisian dialects still around. They're a lot more similar, as far as I'm aware, they're a lot more similar to Dutch now and less similar to English. But if you still want the modern language that's closest to English, if you're not counting Scots, then you're going to have to go with Frisian. But back in the day, they were even closer. English and Frisian were even closer, but only during Old Frisian times and Anglo-Saxon times. Now, the interesting thing is, is that this Old Frisian stuff, there's a lot less written down in Old Frisian. So for the most part, the corpus of Old Frisian um, manuscripts and stuff like that is actually during the Middle English period. And so you can imagine that at one point they were probably actually the same language, but the, the branch of the West Germanic languages that Anglo-Saxon and Old Frisian fall into is called Anglo-Frisian. And likely some of the Frisians were, some Frisians were ones that also colonized Romano-Celtic Britain. So anyways, I do have the creation of Adam here. I'm going to read it to you in Old Frisian, and then I will read my translation. I was actually, when I was looking this up, since I couldn't remember off the top of my head, what it was called here in this book is actually called Adam's Creation. If you go to the Wikipedia page for, for Old Frisian, the one like actual example of a text in Old Frisian they give you is this. And I did not know that, and that, that did not have anything to do, define why I chose this one, but I still think this one's pretty good. So I'm just going to read it real quick, and then I'll open up my old notebook and just read out what I translated it as. Okay, and hopefully my pronunciation is decent. They are, there are some different, I mean, my old English isn't even that good. They did write some things differently. For example, they use TH rather than S or Thorn here, so, but... I think, I think I can pronounce it pretty well. So let's see. God schulp thena eresta menesca. Thet was Adam. Von achter windum. Thet benita von thastena. Thet flesk von thet ertha. Thet blod von thar wetra. Tha herter von thar winda. Thena thurter von thar wokum. Thet sweat von thar dawa. Tha lokar von thar gersa. Tha agena von thera suna. An tha blerm un thena herga om, an tha shoper eva von sina riba, ademes liava. Again, if anyone actually is more talented, I mean, I didn't do that much old Frisian. <laughs> I met once a week, that's why I was half a credit. But so if anyone wants to correct my pronunciation there, please do. But let's go into the translation real quick. This class is basically all just translation. I mean, we did go over phonology and morphology, but for the most part, the class is just translation. Hey, God shaped then the first man, that was Adam. It took eight kinds of matter, the bones from the stone, the flesh from the earth, the blood from the water, the heart from the wind, the thoughts from the sky, the sweat from the dew, the hair from the grass, the eyes from the sun. And then he blew on them holy breath and then created Eve from his rib. Adam's beloved. I think a lot of that's actually pretty recognizable for those who do speak modern English. I don't know how you'd be watching this video without speaking modern English. So, I mean, Winda is 
wind, wetra is water, ertha is earth, stena is stone, wulkum is welkin, basically, which is an old-fashioned word for sky, dao is dew, gersa is grass, there's, a lot of, there's been a metathesis of the R there, but, uh, which is really common, because R is a liquid. And then we have suna, which is sun, so just a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot there, so Benita is bone, flask is flesh. It seems interesting because it doesn't seem like the sk has stayed, which is one thing that you can tell is more similar to like Old Saxon and some other Germanic languages where in English it became a sh sound. Herta's heart, and so forth and so forth. I'm not going to go over all of them with you. But if you are interested, this I did find this. I, I think I remember buying this for about $40. So it's pretty good. It has probably the most you're going to get as far as like a good finding of, a good glossary of Old Frisian for all of the translations you can do. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed that poem. If you can consider it a poem again, I would. It definitely has a rhythm to it, like I said. And, but thanks for watching. Happy Poetry Thursday. I'll catch you next time.